Right, it seems like the Aussie party at Celtic is about to get even bigger with Riley McGree looking like he's going to become Ange's fifth signing of the month. So who is he? We're going to find out on this video with not one but two excellent guests for the football radar angle. We've got Petar Petrov who we mentioned on Sunday's live stream. He's been watching McGree quite a lot lately. And for the Aussie angle, we've got Daniel Garb, who is Aussie sports broadcaster and also, Daniel, the Ballon d'Or judge. I need to I need to ask you about that, first of all. Um, it sounds pretty cool. That, that's yeah. my first question. My second question is, why did you not vote for Kyogo Furuhashi this year? <laughs> he wasn't nominated, so I couldn't. Um, it was impossible to. Hopefully in the years to come I can. But yeah, it's a pretty cool thing to do every year. It was, it's a bizarre thing. Like after the 2018 World Cup, which I was lucky enough to cover in uh, in Russia, I got an email one night asking me to be the Australian judge. And like, immediately I thought it was a prank from one of my mates. I'm like, this is just <laughs> want to be someone trying to send me up. But um, it all checked out. Um, I don't know how it happened. Australia played France in the group. And I interviewed some French journos as part of the build-up to their game. So I'm assuming <coughs> someone nominated me as a part of that but i'm guessing um but it's a fun thing to do every year so uh yeah it's always good to be involved let's uh, let's get chatting about riley mcgree then because that's probably why why people are watching this uh, peter you posted an interesting twitter thread yesterday um in it you say that he's a central or attacking midfielder who can also play on the left or even at left back yeah i don't i don't actually think that he can play left back he was forced to play there, uh, I think, uh, two or three times for Birmingham uh, last season. He did a pretty decent job, but it's definitely not his best position. Like his 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 best role is, is a like this modern modern type of a ten, like not the usual type. We <clears throat> that's like not so functional now. But uh, his best position is definitely as a eight slash ten. He's a hard worker, has a good good technique he's pretty quick as i said in my thread so he can be a real weapon on the counter attack and uh he could play as a wide forward as well like he had uh, a couple of appearances as a winger for adelaide in that great season that he had in like uh, under their bike but i still think that his best position is 10 like in in those like logic turnbull positions right um, and the other thing you mentioned is that he's strong in the counter, he's very pacey, and he presses the game well, so yeah. he, he sounds like a perfect Ange Postacoglu player. Yeah, on paper, he's definitely one of, of, of the midfielders that will benefit from Ange's philosophy. Mm. I think he could have a slow start, like, he's he's a quick learner, but like, as, as we see from his time in Birmingham, he needed some time to settle into a new country, a new way of playing so he could like start most of the first games from the bench but i think he'll be a long-term success good uh, daniel when was the first time you heard about riley mcgree i think i was at his debut um if not his debut one of his very early games i remember it was an asian champions league game uh, for adelaide he actually played against you might remember the japanese midfielder endo um, and yep. i can't remember which team he was playing for he played for them hundreds of times but I remember he played against him. He played that night. I watched him closely and I thought, yeah, there's a player here. Like you could tell he had something about him very early days. And so I've watched him closely since, as most in Australian football have, because he's been you know, someone who's caught the eye for a number of reasons, most notably that incredible goal for Newcastle mm. in that final, which you may have seen, which I was actually at as well. And he's one of the most extraordinary goals I've ever seen live. Can, can you possibly. reenact that for us, Daniel, right now? Yeah, it's late at night in Australia. The, the muscles are a bit tired. I've spent the day putting together outdoor furniture. So, no, I'm not going to be, uh, be doing any of that. But um, I, there was one of those moments, like, from an Australian point of view, it's that goal and the Timmy Cahill goal against the Netherlands at the World Cup. Remember, he's, where, like, there's a, there's a split second where, like, that, that couldn't have happened. Like, no yeah. way has he scored that goal. And then... You realise he has and you just go berserk. So that obviously elevated him into another level in Australia. But one thing I've loved about Riley, having watched him from that early game for Adelaide, is that whenever he's been asked to lift with a standard, he's gone with it. So Adelaide coming into the team, then he plays in Asian Champions League games against better teams. He plays well, um, gets called up to the Socceroos, looks fine, goes overseas and plays for Birmingham, 
no issue. Stars for them. You know, the Birmingham fans are furious that he's going back to Charlotte. So when it comes to Celtic, um, I, I just don't see why he won't be able to lift with the standard again, especially when he's got a manager who has faith in him and knows his background. So, yeah, I, I think it's one to get excited about. Is it fair, though, to say he hasn't lived up to his potential yet? No, I don't think so. I think he has. I think I think wherever he's gone, he's um, he's gone with it. He's still young. Um, he hasn't been playing as a fully-fledged pro for, for that many years. And I don't think he's done anything wrong when he when he has been. I think he's a handy addition to the Socceroos. He's versatile. Maybe he hasn't quite nailed down a position yet. Maybe versatility has held him back a little bit early on in his career. I take your point, Petsa, that as a, a different kind of number 10. Um, yeah, he can play that position well. I actually like him as an eight, box-to-box eight. I think he's got a lot of energy and a good eye for goal. Maybe that's held him back, if anything, being moved around the park. He's played a bit out wide as part of a front three, which I don't think is his best position, but he's been asked to play there a bit. So if anything, that's maybe held him back a touch. But you know, for the Socceroos, he's looked fine. And you go to Birmingham and play in the championship and you start scoring goals in, in that sort of league, um, which we know is so physical and so cutthroat and so taxing on you mentally and physically. Uh, I think he's living up to expectations. Now comes a bigger jump, though, and uh, we'll wait and see if... Um, if he can uh, go with it, I think he will. Exciting stuff. Uh, Peter, he, he has bounced around from, from club to club. He's, he's played with a number of clubs. He seems to me like a guy who, who needs a permanent home now and, and hopefully Celtic can be that home. Yeah, uh, I definitely agree on that part. Like uh, He's been on three walls when he was at Bruges, uh, if I'm not wrong, like Newcastle City and then returning to Adelaide. Uh, I agree with your with your point, and I think Celtic could be that home, but like with Ange there, especially if he could be like their long term manager. I think uh, Magri could settle in well. Uh, he seemed to settle in pretty quickly at Birmingham in terms of like the, uh, his way of living. I saw, I've seen uh, a lot of photos of him and his girlfriend and stuff like that, and loving life in England. He said that he liked the way like uh, the way people are in England and the the type of 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 living there so uh i think that's that's not like really common for most of australians that are like like prefer the warm weather in australia and stuff like that but i think <laughs> scotland can become his permanent home and with touch there if he could settle in a position like daniel said he hasn't really found that perfect spot for himself but if he could settle in that midfield three this could definitely be his permanent home and what about that spell at Birmingham? How how did that go on the pitch? Uh, I actually I actually watched more of his games last year. Like I think he was better this this season. But watched a lot of of his games last year. And then the I Karanka, he wasn't really used as like one time he was used as a ten. One time he was used as a as a wing back. One time he was used as a winger. As Daniel said, I don't don't think his best position is is in that wide area i think he struggles a bit there like he can't open his body in the right angle when he receives the ball and stuff like that which is really important for wingers but uh as i seen in on twitter and uh like media stuff i think this year he's been really good he's most of birmingham fans say that he's been like their best player for the last right. five or ten games so yeah he's been growing quick time interesting um Daniel, how much potential is there in Riley McGree? I mean, the easy comparison is, is Tom Rogic. Could, could he be as good as Tom Rogic? Oh, I'm not sure about that. I mean, they're very different players. Tom's far more naturally gifted, um, and Tom's skill is of a different level. Riley's a different player. I think his energy and his industry, although he's got excellent skill, um, makes him the player that he is. I think he'll be a bit more of a slow burn. I'm not sure he'll quite wow like Tom does, but I think he's someone who gradually will impress and build over the journey. And I think uh, I think he's going to be a success. The, the Ange signing of him is really exciting for Australians because we're all loving the Ange journey, of course. But it's that first Aussie signing. Rogic was there already. So he's finally gone and, and got an Aussie. And he's investing a fair bit. I mean, it's not... They're splashing some money there. You're talking about two, three million pounds. I mean, that's a decent outlay for Celtic these days. So 
there's clearly some faith in there from Ange and from the board in Ange as well. So that's exciting from an Aussie point of view. Um, so I think he'll get a lot of games. And I think Ange will know his best position and he'll give him the chance to really settle there without too much pressure. Uh, yeah, he's not going to be a Tom Rogic type player. I wouldn't want to say that he's going to even have the impact that Tom Rogic has had because we know that's profound at Celtic, the big goals that he scored in big games. But I think he can be an impactful player. It might just be slightly more gradual over time. He's still young and he's still got a bit to learn in the Scottish League. Yeah, and when Ange came into the club, were, were you and other Aussies thinking that Riley McGree would, would be you know, one of the ones at the top of the list that he'd go for? Good question. Um, I think people thought you know, Aaron Moy... Matt Ryan, yeah. they were the two that were linked straight away. We thought, yeah, he'd look at those. I'm not sure if Riley McGree was mentioned, maybe because his transfer situation was so weird. It's one of the more bizarre situations in Australian football. Like he's signed by Charlotte in the MLS, gets loaned to not necessarily, yeah, a bigger club and a bigger league in Birmingham, does really well. Then Charlotte brings him back. It was just so odd. Like, how's this going to work out? Surely he can't stay in the MLS when he's doing so well. In the championship, that's what we were all thinking. So maybe that sidetracked people a little bit. But I think if you had mentioned Riley McGree as an option, Australian fans would have gone, "Yeah, I can see that. I could see him being an Ange player. I can see him being on the radar." But he wasn't necessarily discussed as much initially. But I don't think you would have had too much rejection of it. Yeah, and Peter, obviously that that Ange Riley link is is the one that everyone's going to be talking about. And it seems like you know Ange could be the the perfect guy. To, to get the best out of, of Riley McGree. He, he gave Riley McGree his first call-up to the Australian national team in, in I think, 2017, when he was um, just, just at the end of his time yeah, as, as Socceroos boss. And McGree, I think, was still a teenager at, at that stage. So um, th there's clearly a, a good bond between them there. I actually think that, uh, firstly, uh, on the... On the on Daniel's question about uh, the comparison between Rogic and Magri, I want to say that I think he, he, one thing that Rogic isn't like in terms of personality is that natural leader. I think Magri can be a leader in the squad if he can, could cement a starting spot in the 11. Okay. But yeah, <clears throat> uh, I think I think Ange can definitely bring the best out of a player in with Magri's qualities. He's, he isn't that natural talent, doesn't have that natural talent that Rogic has. But has the drive he's like has that fu attitude that makes him uh really mot motivated to get into every game and get stuck in challenges and and play play really play the game he wants to be involved yeah. he he always wants to to be the guy in the spotlight which could be uh Ange could be the guy that makes him a big player for celtic because like uh his his philosophy of football that they have a lot of possession pressing and like attack on the front foot, which Riley definitely would love to be. That's a good point. He's got a very good mentality. I mean, he captained the the Oli Roos, captained the youth team. He's been viewed as a leader. At Adelaide, you could see he had a lot of personality on the pitch yeah. when he came through. And despite his young age, you know, he's a local boy, South Australian boy. That, that, with his first couple of years, he was looked to as a leader on the pitch and someone who, you know, generated energy in the fans, drove the team on. Tommy, as we know, is a bit different. He's a bit more placid. If he scores a big goal, he'll give everyone a lift. But outside of that, he keeps to himself. That's just his style. He's like that with the national team as well. Um, Riley's got a bit more personality in that sense. So I think from a leadership point of view, he can probably add you know, a good mentality to the squad. Not that Tom doesn't, but he's just a bit more outward with it. Yeah, I think... Uh, uh, sorry. I think uh, like he's a bit different in that that manner when you compare him to Turbo and, and Logic, he's more energetic than the two. Of them. Right, because we, we signed Hatati, uh, Rio Hatati from from the J League as well, and, and he was billed as a, a kind of Tom Ro uh, uh, David Turnbull with a bit of an engine. So it seems like McGree might be similar, um, maybe a bit more of a um, you know work rate than Rio Hatati. Slightly less quality, maybe, but but Ange is building a midfield with different options. That's what I take away from this. There's real different options now in that midfield. Um, one thing I did want to touch on, Daniel, just a, a bit of of let's call it off field drama. Um, in in 2019, when McGree and three other Aussie players were were banned, 
Um, it, it's worth saying that McGree's ban was until April, while the other three were until August. We're, we're not quite sure why that was the case. Um, yeah. For anyone who doesn't know, they had made contact with a Cambodian girl on Tinder um, who had then been left stranded in a hotel and subsequently complained to the Australian embassy that there may have been photos or videos of her doing the rounds. Um, there were no suggestions of any assault, but a seven-month investigation found that the players broke the curfew. Was this a big story in Australia at the time? Yeah, yeah it was because it was in the lead-up to the Olympics. And so, I mean, it ended up, not affecting their Olympic campaign because the Olympics got postponed because of COVID. So the players went in the end. But yeah, I mean, when you involve the Olympic team um, and an Australian team abroad and something like that, it was a big story. It was a serious story. And I know the players were deeply affected by it. The details of it were protected to an extent. I mean, everything that you said was out there in the public, but no one really knows why Riley got a lesser penalty. Um, discussion is that his involvement was far less than some of the other players um but look I, I don't think anyone looks back now and and tars those players with with a brush for the rest of their careers they were young they made a mistake the suggestion is it wasn't anything overly severe that went down but they broke the code of conduct they behaved poorly um they deserve to get punished in that sense but it's not something you look at and and write a player off for a long period of time from a character point of view because of. They're young, they made mistakes, they owned up to it, they apologised, they copped it, they copped it in the press. It's not nice having your name out in the press, but perhaps they deserved it, I don't know. But um, they've moved on now, all of them, um, and they've got through it and, and, and hopefully everyone has um, learnt a lot from it. But I don't think you can tarnish... Riley's character forever and a day because of something like that. We all make mistakes when we were young, and they all they all cop their whack. Put it that way, mm. and I think you just you just move on from it. His temperament isn't an issue then. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, he's a really good kid, um, intelligent kid with a good mentality. Was involved in a group where someone made a mistake, and he was there. Who knows what his involvement was? But even so, I mean, you. you yeah, you, you move on from those things as you get older, and um, we, so many players make mistakes. And uh, he hasn't shown anything outside of being a very good character for his clubs and for his national team, um, and at the Olympics when uh, when he's been called upon. So, no, I think I don't think people should look into that too much. Interesting. Good to get your insight on that. Um, final comments, guys. Peter, how how would you sum up this? Well potential signing yes it's uh as daniel said i think uh the the fact that they're investing so many money so much money in him means that Ansh has faith in him i think as i said earlier he'll get like a time to settle in the start could be slow but at the end i think he'll be a long-term success i think he has all the qualities needed to to break into the site and be a success in the scottish premier league i think he, he was definitely too good for the MLS and this step is, it comes at the perfect time. He's not too young or not too old. Yeah, good. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's a, a really smart signing. You know, if you play that well in the championship and then you've got a coach who knows you so well in another, you know, in a league like Scotland, um, it's just a perfect match. Um, yeah, there's going to be some pressure. I think he can, as I've said before, whenever he's been asked to go up a level, he's gone with it. So that hasn't overwhelmed him in his career. So I don't think that will hold him back. And will find a position for him. His versatility versatility will help him at times. It'll probably hinder him at times. That'll probably be the story for him throughout his career. But ultimately, I think you'll find a position in that midfield three, get enough games. You know, you look at some, what someone like Cam Devlin's doing at Hearts, having a really good impact. Um, Riley was rated as a much higher player than Cam was. Nothing away, Take nothing away from what Cam's doing. We're all loving it. He's a real talent. But Riley, if, if Cam's having that impact, Riley can have a, a big impact in Scotland as well, um, especially when you know the manager so well and and you know the manager has such an aura about him like Ange does amongst Australians. Uh, he'll just be willing to die for him on the pitch, I think, every time he steps out. So it's a great signing for Australian football. I think it's one that will work out nicely for Celtic too. 
Exciting lads, you, you've both got me officially excited, so so thanks very much for that. Um, Peter, get yourself off for, for a bit of lunch probably. Daniel, you get yourself off for a bit of sleep probably, uh, given yeah. the time difference. It's been great to have you both on and yeah, thanks for watching everyone. We'll speak to you soon.